The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benny Hinn Ministries and viewers like you in this area. This is your day. The multifaceted ministry of Benny Hinn is touching the world with the saving, healing, and life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Through massive crusades, daily television, feeding programs, orphanage support, church planning projects, and much, much more. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes because this is your day to experience God's miracle working power in your life. This is your day. This is your day. A mighty wave of God's glory is about to invade your life. I'm telling you, the glory of God is going to touch your life. Get ready. Get ready. That's right, I'm telling you what I know from the Lord. Great days are ahead, great days are ahead. Arise, shine, for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It's coming. With me today is John Paul Jackson on the program, fantastic program today. Tell your friends, call them now, tell them to tune in. Plus, my dear friend and yours, Mr. Steve Brock. You, Pastor. Who we love very much, Thank may you, I sir. add. Thank you, sir. You've been such a wonderful friend to me. I love And you. so I thought today we'd have you here with John Paul, just in case you may learn yes. something. I need to learn something. I'm telling you right now. But, <laughs> Pastor, I'm excited about tonight's service. I can't hardly wait. New crusade, of the brand new. Tomorrow crusade. night. Is it tomorrow night? Tomorrow. This is Wednesday today. It's all right, though. I'm sorry. We forgive you. We all forgive him, don't you we? Forgive That's me. right. It's tomorrow night. Tampa, Florida is going to be it, awesome. It's going to be a phenomenal crusade. Let me just tell you something, honestly. You know, sometimes... Well, I, I may show up Wednesday night just to be there, you know. <laughs> you, you, you miss up tonight, right. <laughs> well, there is a prayer meeting on tonight. Oh, that is, yes, that's right. true. But what I was going to say earlier, the Lord prepares us for these crusades in an amazing way because the Holy Spirit always prepares the hearts. Mm -hmm. This one... If I w would go from zero to 10, it's a 10. Ooh. I'm talking about high excitement in my spirit. And you sometimes can sense the level God will take you to in that meeting. Absolutely. I'm telling you, you've had it in your meetings, I'm sure, sure where you know where God is going to right. take you. Stephen, this whole year, I prophesy this on this program, this whole year is going to be beyond glorious. Amen. Stephen, I've been having dreams. People of God, I've been having dreams. Some, some of them are almost too awesome. I'm telling you. Yes. God Almighty always prepares His people. Mm -hmm. He will do nothing till He speaks to His prophets, which we read, of course. And God is doing that. Before I began in the ministry, the Lord would give me dreams. Back then, I could not understand. But now I look back and I see, oh, yeah, that happened. Yeah, that happened. I'm having new dreams now. Mm. And God has always spoken to me in dreams. I don't know why. It shall come to pass on the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes, yes. And it says, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And then it talks about dreams and visions. Dreams and visions are the language of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad John Paul is here so we can talk to him <laughs> yes, about sir. that and much more. You know, every time I've had certain dreams, I've called John, Paul John. I said, you know, help me understand. Like last week you were here. Mm -hmm because there were certain things I could not understand. And God really has gifted him with mm. helping us interpret dreams. Thank you. Like Joseph with Pharaoh and Daniel with Nebuchadnezzar. But let me ask you first of all, okay. because I, I really want to talk to you today about <clears throat> God speaking to his people. Yes. Even though we may have talked about this or touched on it in the past, a lot of precious partners are watching who I know will be helped today. Mm -hmm. How does God speak to his people? Well. God wants to speak to us, first of all, we have to understand that. We have to believe God wants to speak to us. And He speaks to us in a variety of ways. Job tells us that, that God speaks in many ways and man does not perceive it. And it's certainly true. Even today, God speaks in many ways and we don't perceive it. He speaks to us through His Word first and foremost. When we read this living Word of God... He can quicken a spirit, yes. uh, quicken by His Spirit a word to us. Now, may I ask you something? Yes. Is it smart to do? No. No. That's what I thought, of course. I knew that. I just wanted him to say so. And I just no. pushed in my bubble because that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, no, I'm but teasing. we can be reading along through this and we can be reading about David and something that David has done. Or we can be reading about Samuel or, or any number of, of encounters in the Bible. We can read through here and we can go, you know what? Exactly 
what has happened to them, the principle of what happened to David or to Samuel is happening to me right because now. Because God doesn't change. Yes, because he doesn't change it. And therefore, I need to respond in like way, in a righteous way to wow. things. This is a living word of God. So we need in our reading process to believe that when something is quickened to us in this wonderful word, it really is the Holy Spirit bringing an impetus to us to awaken our spirit, to stir our spirit, to recognize this is the Lord. Okay, it's so valid. His word. It's His well, word. What else? Okay, His word. Then there's circumstances in our life that God speaks to us through. Things that are, that are going on around us. For example, I, when I was in my teenage years, I fell away from the Lord for a short while, came back to the Lord because I heard two men talking in an elevator about Him. Now, they didn't know I was unsaved. They didn't know I was listening. There was three or four other people in the elevator. Mm. But I heard these two men talking, and it was a holy haunting of God. The Spirit of God would not let go of me. And I knelt down that night and said, Father, I, I've got to come back to you. It just would not let go of me. So he spoke to me as I heard those two men talking. He convicted me. The, the spirit of conviction of sin fell upon me. Then, of course, that he, we can, he can speak to us through what we ca I call inner knowings or spiritual knowings. Let me go back to the second because okay. what you said is so important because that is also biblical. Eliezer, for example, mm -hmm. God spoke to him through circumstance. Yes. Just like you said, God uses situations. Yes. Where certain things happen in the scriptures and he knew God was in it. And something else about uh, uh, circumstances. God Almighty will not reveal things until we're in the way. It says he was in the way. In other words, yes. he was moving. There was, right. there was action in his life. So right. God will use circumstances as long as you are moving. Yes. Yeah, sitting still isn't going to help you. You don't, you don't do anything besides gain paralysis when you sit still. You have, to be uh, you have to be aggressively, what I call aggressively, pursuing God's purpose for your life. Uh, let me ask you now <clears throat> about the third. Okay. Please. Through the inner knowings. The inner knowings are spiritual knowings, where that your spirit and the Holy Spirit commune with each other. That witness. Yes, there's a witness that's involved where you're, you're walking down the street and the Holy Spirit says, John Paul, call your brother right now. Go home or get your cell phone, call your brother right now, or call this person right now, or write this person a letter. You have You'll that, feel that something yes. strong that you should yes. do it right there and, and then. It, most of the time, in my, my case, it's not even my own type of thought process that I'm experiencing. It's not the words that I would normally use. Right. It's almost like a different vocabulary, but it's very clear what he wants me to do, what I, what I need to do. Now, let me also uh, expand on this, because sometimes you'll have a thought or you'll think it's God. If it's really God, it'll never go away. Right. If it goes away, it's not the Lord. Right. So it, it's magnified. When God is, is in it, it just gets stronger and, and stronger. It just does not leave you. And it's not necessarily an audible voice, right? No. No, no, no. No, it's, it's an inner knowing. An inner knowing. Yeah. Uh, you see, the Holy Spirit speaks through witness mm -hmm. often. Yes. And that's what John Paul is exactly. talking about. It is a witness of, where that he, he comes and he says, this is what the Lord wants to do, your spirit and his spirit. If I can, if I can Pastor, I'd like to read this, this verse in, uh, in 1 Corinthians. Please, go ahead. First Corinthians and then I have two. another verse from the Psalms after that. Okay. Go ahead, please. Uh, verse 9 says this, As it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of a man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Well, when we understand and we can come to, the, to grips with the fact that all revelation comes from the Holy Spirit who is searching the deep things of God, then we'll understand that He may choose to do it through a dream. He may choose to do it through various other means, through the Word, a witness of the Word, and so on. But it is the Holy Spirit that gives this. Therefore, when the Holy Spirit gives it, it will bring peace to your spirit. I often teach people that peace is the potting soil for revelation. Mm. When peace is mm. not there, Say that again. then that. peace is the potting soil for revelation. That's when you walk in peace, His Spirit communing with our spirit for the deep things of God. The Spirit searches the deep things of God. Verse 13 goes on to say this, These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. In other words, he speaks spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit. So our spirit will be quickened, will be awakened. Quickened, and that's a good word. Also, our spirit is sensitive mm -hmm. 
mm. after we've prayed. Yes, more sensitive than ever. Yeah. Heightened. So people that do not pray cannot hear God as easily. But people who have prayed, right. they have gotten all the stuff that's in the way out. Question. You, so, you made reference, and I thought it was excellent you made that point, that if it's this thought process is of God, it won't go away. Mm. Well, is there a process to understanding the dream that you've had? to make sure that this is God. Yeah. Well, it's not I, just something you had to I'd eat. I'd like huh? to get into that with John Paul. Before he went to bed. You know, yeah, exactly. Like that. Let me just give you a scripture from Psalm 45, verse 1. My heart is indicting, or in other words, bubbling, mm. boiling, with a good matter. So David felt an unction. Mm -hmm. He had a knowing, as we call it, yes. in his being. And then he said, I speak to the things which I have made touching the, um, touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So before he spoke it, he sensed it. Yes. He felt it, yes. as we are talking about. Right. Yes. And the word here is bubbling or boiling. So it's something that's growing. Right. So when God gives you that inner knowing, it's a boiling inner mm -hmm. knowing. It's a bubbling. It's something that just... It's effervescent. It's always up there. Within you. Oh, it's right good. there all the time. Yeah, it's not something you'll question. It's, right. it's something you'll know, as we say, you'll know that you know that you know that you know. It's a bubbling knowing. In Georgia, we say you know it and you know it. Yeah. Exactly. And, and when it's the Holy Spirit, you'll not be able to get away from mm -hmm. it. Now back to your, to your uh, the dreams. dreams. And I'm going to get to, 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 to that just a second with John Paul. But may I just ask you one thing about... Sure. There are times... When it's, it's not clear, yeah. even after you've prayed, God seems to give it to you in pieces. Yes. Why? Well, Proverbs 25, 2 tells us, It's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of a king to search the matter out. And basically what I, how I interpret that, it basically says this, that God is so interested in you becoming what he's called you to be. He's going to use a process of discovery in your life to help you understand what he just is trying to tell you. So, so is it where, okay, you've sought the Lord, mm -hmm. now you can hear his voice, but his voice comes, if I may say, here a little, there, there a little. Mm -hmm. You're not getting the whole message. Right. And he does it so you can seek deeper? Seek deeper, absolutely. You seek deeper after the very thing that he's trying to show you, wanting to show you. Sometimes I've found that the, the process of discovery is, is, uh, is more important than the actual answer that I got. God wanted me to learn something in the process that was vitally important to what he wanted me to become or to do. It's like when you have dreams. Back to your dreams, Stephen. Sometimes you'll have a dream and you won't understand it. Mm -hmm. But then the next night, another dream. Mm -hmm. Then maybe another week, another dream. Mm -hmm. You have to put, to put them together, and then you'll get the message. Yes. If you ignore one, it's like a puzzle. It goes. Yes. And, and now the question again is, why does God do that to us? And the answer is, well, as we he, just said earlier. To go deep. Yeah, to go deep. He causes us to go but deep. But give us that scripture from Proverbs. That's Proverbs 25, 2. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of a king to search the matter out. It's kingly to have to search. Sometimes we think we allow the enemy to wow. play a mind it's game with kingly us. kingly yes. to have to search. Yeah, we think that sometimes the enemy tries to say, well, oh, if you were only more God. spiritual, you wouldn't have to search like this. And the wow. reality is it's kingly to have to search. In fact, it's a glorious kingly. It's the glory of a king to search the matter out. So it's not a bad thing at all. We have to have to understand the ways of God. And part mm. of the understanding is how the enemy tries to deceive us into thinking, well, if you were just more spiritual, if you just knew more of the Bible, if you just fasted more. And the reality is there are times when we have to fast. We have to pray, obviously. But the reality is, is that sometimes God hides it because he wants to make us a king. He wants to make us more kingly in our nature, how we handle our relationships with others, how we handle what God has called us to do, whether it's a business we own or a job that we a person we work for as our ministry or whether in the, we're in a full-time ministry. It's kingly. And part of what God wants to do is develop a kingly nature in how we go about doing what He wants us to do. Now, the end result is knowing Him. Yes. Because God gives us uh, no, exper no experience in the Spirit comes our way so we can have a little picnic. The end result must be knowing Him yes. and seeking Him. And seeking Him. So let's talk about why does God want us to know Him? 
Well, there's one, one way that reason for sure, and that is found, I believe, in Genesis 18, where God speaks to a heavenly court, and he tells them, I have known Abraham because he will teach his children of my ways and teach them to know me. That is so wonderful. He will teach his children of my ways and teach them to know me. I have known him so that he might teach others to know me. And so this is an, a very interesting uh, aspect of why God speaks to us. In knowing him more, we love him more, and we tell others about him, which incites them to want to know him more. Keep talking to me about knowing the Lord, because like you said earlier, spirit to spirit, it's not something that's mental. You cannot know the Lord no. uh, just by reading books. Look what Isaiah 26 verse 9 says. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. Yes. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Yes. That's a very powerful truth. Mm -hmm. We desire to know the Lord. That's why we're talking like this tonight. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the program today. But for us to know him, we have to go deeper than the soul, deeper than the mind, yes. deeper than getting books and reading all that we know about. No, no, you've got to go into the spirit realm right. and seek him with your heart, with your being. And that's where, let me just say this to you. The Holy of Holies is the place of quietness where your being begins to seek the Lord. Right. right. And you're really unable to, uh, uh, your words almost become useless. That's you're right. unable to actually audibly say anything to God. Right. They become inadequate. Yeah, it's a place of being. Boy, how lovely. I love that. It's just a place of being in God. Existing. You're existing. Yeah. You, Stephen. You, are, you, just, you absorb him. You, he soaks into you. He, he let, starts to attune you. Yeah, let me, let me give you an example. A few days ago, before uh, this secular network did a program on our ministry, naturally I sought the Lord because I wanted to have His peace. I wanted to have His mind. I wanted to know all is well from heaven. And as I, begin to, as I began to seek Him, like all of us, I began with my requests. I began with my fears. I began with my worries. I began with where, where I was in the flesh, that is. We all begin in the flesh. Nobody begins right in the spirit because we move from the outer court into the holy place, right. into the holy of holies. Right. <clears throat> and the outer court is the flesh. The holy place is the soulish realm. The holy of holies is the spiritual. Mm -hmm. But now what happened is, as I was seeking the Lord, determined to hear Him, three hours I was in there, mm. three hours before I could even feel a drop of God's presence. Now, when we leave after one, one hour, we've accomplished nothing. Mm -hmm. You have to have time. Right. You can't tell God, well, I have 20 minutes, Lord, you better show up. It's not going to happen this mm -hmm. way. He is God. <laughs> you can't even tell somebody you're going to see on earth. If you go for an appointment, you can, well, you tell this man, I, I'm, I'm going to wait for 10 minutes. If he's not out, I'm leaving. No, no, no. If you really need that man, you're going to wait a whole day. And so it is with God. Yes. So now, three hours, and you feel a, something loose. And there came the time during that beautiful time with the Lord that started rough. It always does. And now there came that time when the Holy Spirit came in. And when the Holy Spirit came in, I could not say anything. Yeah. I could no longer say anything I had just said for the last two hours or whatever. Now it was all Holy Ghost led. It was beautiful. And when that presence came, it was a whisper now. Mm -hmm. It was no longer mind, it was spirit. And there was an intimacy, a very special intimacy, where you felt he's close. Right. I don't have to shout. Mm. I, I don't have to right. cry. Mm -hmm. 
Now I can just say, Jesus. Mm. And he's right there. Yes. That's seeking the Lord. With my spirit, it says in Isaiah. That's Listen to right. this. With my spirit within me will I seek thee early. And then the following, uh, the following words. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. So there is, the result will be that men are touched, lives are changed. Mm -hmm. yes. God's word is revealed and people learn righteousness. Yes. So prayer not only affects you, it's going to affect somebody else out there. That's right. So when you walk out, somebody's struck by the presence of God. Amen. Or something happens or God uses you. Um, a few days ago, you probably heard me teach on the presence of God on uh, two very powerful programs. These programs were taught after a morning when I was talking to the master. Wow. And that's where everything is calm. Okay. And David Pompkins came and said, oh, we feel God's presence. Well, simple. I've just been with him. Right. When you're with him, you feel him. And people feel him. Take on the nature of the king. That's right. He rubs on to you. Yes. His presence begins to affect you. Yeah, the nature so, of the king. That's exactly. Powerful. Tomorrow on the program, we'll talk more about this, but I pray that what we just said has, got, has, has brought that hunger up in you. Dearest Jesus, mm. I pray today yes. that you'll yes. cause mighty hunger, mm. mighty hunger in your people. Blessed Jesus, you said, blessed are they that hunger. I pray you'll bless them with hunger. And bless them with that infilling afresh of the Spirit in Jesus' name. Heal your inheritance. Bring health to your people as they seek you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Tomorrow, Tampa, Florida. If I was you, I would start right now going to Tampa. P people, I'm going to tell you right now. Saints of God, this year will be so awesome in the Holy Ghost. I can't, I can't even describe what I sense to you in, the, in my heart. Every service is going to have the glory cloud on it. I'm telling you, you just wait and see. So tomorrow, Tampa, Sundown, be fantastic. And of course, Friday morning at 10 a.m., Friday night, 7 p.m., young people come and let's see the Lord move. Uh, because Friday, at the end of the service, I'll be praying for the young people. And of course, Thursday, a great service, miracle service for everybody. Friday morning for everybody. Friday night for, ev ev for everyone. But I always love to pray for the young people at the end of those meetings yes. on Friday night. Phenomenal. Oh, fantastic. Atlanta, Georgia, we're going to have a magnificent conference. Uh, February the 19th, 2021 at the Hyatt Regency, Atlanta. Call today for information and reservation, and you, we uh, we are charging a fee. It's a small fee uh, for for the meals that you'll be having during the conference. But make sure to call today, and we're sending you a brochure. Anyways, in the mail, many of you wonderful partners. And I'm California, a mighty crusade in the Holy Ghost, February the 27th, 28th at the Pond in Anaheim. Another. God crusade. I'm, I'm going to call it a God crusade. I have such a mighty, I can't even call it a feeling, except to call it a Holy Ghost unction about this crusade. We may get raptured one of these days. Stephen, I'm telling you, I'm not just saying to, 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 for any reason, except it's the truth. I have an unction of the Holy Ghost about this one. Don't ask me why. Oh. It's going to be something. It's going to be awesome. I, I prophesy it will be the greatest crusade ever in Southern California. It's mm. got to go a long and way. And you will it's be there. It's got to there. go a long way. Yes, sir. I'm telling you. Memphis, Tennessee, March 13, 14, at the Mid-South Coliseum. All these crusades will be absolutely mighty in the Holy Ghost, I promise you. Dallas, Texas, March 26 through the 28th. This will be a convention, uh, sorry, a conference for pastors, ministers, full-time workers, part-time workers in the, in the ministry. No fee but you must register so call today 817-722-2000 and then Pittsburgh Pennsylvania great good Friday service at the Mellon Arena April 18th been telling you about this 
very anointed CD called Atmosphere 3. Powerful songs from 2002 and worship that will lift you to the heavens for a gift of $25 or more. Also, John Paul Jackson's book, I Am 365 Names of God, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Just, you're going to be so blessed tomorrow. For a gift of $30 or more, you can get this one. Calling 1-800-433-1900. The Holy Spirit has put it in my heart to have a very, very important and special day of prayer. March the 3rd. Something is going to happen in March, ladies and gentlemen. I'm prophesying this. Very, very important that we pray. And I want you to send your prayer requests so we can believe God for miracles in your life, for a new visitation. I pray that God will put it in your heart to believe for a new Holy Ghost visitation in your life, your home and family. So send that prayer request. We're going to have people with me here, mightily anointed in the Spirit. We're going to lay hands on your requests together and pray, and you'll be a part of it on television. But send it today, Post Office Box 16, 2000, Irving, Texas. And remember the work of the Lord. We need to support God's work today more than ever. So sow that seed financially, believing God for miracles in your life financially. Do it today. And believe me, we do need your help. We got to get this message to the nations. We got to do it now before it's too late. So thank you. And tomorrow... Again with John Paul Jackson, may the Lord keep you, bless you, and your miracle is surely on the way. Bye-bye. John Paul Jackson is an internationally recognized author, teacher, and conference speaker on the subjects of hearing God, dreams and visions, and spiritual gifts. His newest book, I Am 365 Names of God, will guide you through scriptural promises and prophetic revelations of who God was, is, and forever will be. With more than 400 pages, this unique and enriching devotional shows God to be a loving Father who wants to be known by you and be in a relationship with you. You'll discover that God's name is to be feared with the utmost reverence, loved with the greatest affection, recognized as an open storehouse of blessing, and utilized as a mighty shield of protection. I Am 365 Names of God can be yours today for a gift of $30. Write to Benny Hinn Ministries, P.O. Box 16, 2000 Irving, Texas, 75016. You may also order by phone at 1-800-433-1900 or online at www.bennyhinn.com. Embark on a journey in which you can experience God in exciting and extraordinary ways. For in His name there is peace, comfort, provision, healing, and transforming power. Write, call, or order online today.